All right, back to the camp. Let's see what's going on here. These guys doing anything? Oh, I looked at those before. Babel. Shimmerin, Paimon, you're back. Allow me to dust you off. Chet and Arazik are waiting for you as well. We brought the object that you needed. Chet told me, thank you both so much. We were ambushed within the canyon on the way back. What? We were attacked by your people on our way back. There were lots of people hiding in the canyon waiting to intercept us. They were pretty scary too. Do you know what that was all about? No, I haven't a clue how that happened. Traders and exiles turning to banditry on the roads is quite normal. But the canyons here should have a lot of tributaries. Seems that I've underestimated them. This has to do with the Derfi. What did you say? That's right, we found this. Give a Derfi's letter to Babel. A Derfi. This is indeed his handwriting, and it is even signed in his hand. That he is a traitor is beyond doubt. But what if he's been set up? Then he has still stained our honor with his name, and will accept his punishment. However, he left the camp some time ago, saying that he needed to go get some supplies from outside. I must apologize. I let my guard down. So you can be sure that we will exile that traitor. However, he shall not be permitted back into the tenant hunting grounds, save in chains. Rest assured, you two, that I will get to the bottom of this on behalf of our tribe. I will not allow such happenings to go unanswered. As for the mother of the jinn, can I see her? Honored Lady Lilupar, beloved servant of Nabu Malikata, founder of Gurabad, eternal prisoner of I... Kanaum. <laughs> Kanaum? Babel of the mortal Tanit tribe seeks an audience with you. Yawn. Hmm, what did you say? Were you calling for me? I don't quite remember all those names. Yes, we ask only Lady Lilupar that you lead us to the Eternal Oasis to set us on the path to meet with the Slumbering Queen. It's kind of funny earlier she was scolding that dude for calling her Lady, and now she's calling Lilupar Lady Lilupar. So sleepy. My master, did you wake me to speak with this servant? Sigh. Why do you love consorting with these coarse folk so? Well then, Babel, will you not dance? Amuse us, and we may yet grant you three wishes. Um, what? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the mother of this tribe. Right. Ha ha ha. My apologies. Apologies. I've read the severity in your brows. Or, sir... Servility? <laughs> what is that word? I merely could not help but wish to see you dance and entertain us. I am merely your servant and will listen to all I have to say. I shall follow the dictates of the queen of all oases, Nabu Malikata's will, with due trepidation, and then I will not defy. Ha! Huh, I shall not be so crude. Save your solicitations. I already have a master, and I do not intend to take on any servants either. So I fear your calculations will come to naught. So Matriarch Babel can grovel too, huh? You have yet to see many things indeed. My master, you hold my true name. I shall do what you, and only you, desire. The decision shall be yours. I will not speak to another word these foul desert dwellers. Master? Your master? Why well, yes indeed, and it is this noble princess you see before you. Now, now, you need not kneel. Come on, say something, why don't you? Just look at her face. I understand. In that case, will you help us, Shimmerin? I will help you find the Eternal Oasis. If that is your choice, then I gladly obey. Well then, I shall lend my aid. A pleasure to work with you, Desert Woman. But a word to the wise. Nothing save death can break a contract forged by true names and I will be watching you on my master's account. Do not think for a moment that you may wield me. I understand. And it is good that you do, Dweller of the Sands. Now then, do not disturb my rest. So, you have forged a contract with her then? Uh, yes. Yes, I understand. You have done well. 
Jin are arrogant, unfettered creatures, and yet you have managed to bind her. You have surpassed my expectations indeed. But that is well. Our path to the eternal oasis has been made smoother. So please, Shimran, if I may ask something of you, keep Lulupar loyal at all costs. Okay. You have my thanks. Ah, Jet and Azarik have returned. You youngsters catch up for now? I'll have to ask for your pardon. I need some time to organize the information you have gathered. Miss Babble sure is busy, huh? Okay, talk to Azarik and Jet. We're here. Come on, let's find a place to sit and grab a bite. Hey there, Azarik, Jet. It's been a while. Huh, hardly that long. Good to see that you're all well. Jet's really fond of you. We were just talking about you, in fact. Eh? What did you talk about? Is Jet still angry? Huh? Angry? Oh, she did mention a little disagreement you had, yes. But you know, she talks quite carelessly, but isn't actually good at expressing her feelings. Still, you should reflect as well. Jet's very concerned about your safety. She should pay a bit more attention to her suggestions. Sorry, it was my mistake for leaving her out. Sorry, it was my fault, really. I was petty, childish. I knew how important Lilupar was to our mission, but I threw a tantrum anyway. Lilupar says stuff weirdly, and she does use some pretty creepy analogies. But she looked out for us the whole way, so, well, she's different from the people we've met so far, for sure. But she doesn't seem like a bad person. Whatever the case, it'll be fine. Shimmerin's important to you, isn't she, Jet? Yeah, I mean, I'm always seeing you as my best friend, but I'm just worried that... Never mind. Yeesh, you're so serious all of a sudden. Paimon doesn't know what to say at all. Ugh, there's no need to be so awkward. I won't get mad anyhow from now on, and you can count on that. Huh, that's right, that's the spirit. Alright, about the mother of Jin. Is it with you? Yes. Azarik, didn't Matriarch Babel tell you not to ask that willy-nilly? It's fine, Jet. I mean, I guided you half the way, so I count as a companion, don't I? A companion, you say? Perhaps you speak too hastily. Eh? The panel's talking? Such insolence! If you recognize me not, then your silence shall serve better. Oh, well, it's a pretty fierce one for sure. Is that the mother of the djinn, then? I'd watch my tongue if I were you, Desert Spawn. This is Azarik, one of my brothers here in the tribe. Hmm, well, we could have chosen worse. This one is sturdy enough. A shame that he has too big a mouth and too small a brain. How is talking to her supposed to not end as an exercise in frustration? Reckon you just need to get used to it. Hmm, you know, Jet, did you find Ben-Ben pretty cute, didn't you? How about you just treat her like Ben-Ben that talks? They both fly, don't they? Oh, it's fine. Sharp tongues are to be expected of the legendary genie, somewhat, I mean. Whatever the case, she's on our side, isn't she? We'll be fine. On your side? Did I mishear you? Apologize, but you shall not find me on the side of those who entreat my master while wearing two faces. My master trusts you, and I shall trust her reasoning for that, but I will be watching you, Azarik. Heh, <laughs> well, I guess that's just what a genie's like. It's fine. All oh, right. Didn't anything happen while we were separated? Just curious, I mean. Same here. Did I miss anything? Uh, about that. So, a traitor along with accomplices from other tribes. They might be the same bunch I was tracking down previously. It's even possible that they're collaborating with dangerous outsiders like the Fatui. Huh? Huh, pretty good, Jet. Made the best of some rather limited information on our foes there. That's not too hard. I've been helping the Matriarch to track and eliminate traitors, so their movements and patterns aren't that alien to me. My dad and I have also encountered these people who call themselves Fatui in the past, so they're no strangers to me either. Still, I ran off in a huff without giving any thought to what, to whether they would act. I'm sorry, that was my mistake. Well, let's leave that aside for now. It wasn't even your fault. I'm with Paimon. Don't beat yourself up over about, uh, about this too much, Jet. They seem to have been ordered specifically not to attack you. Can't blame you for having lowered your guard there. 
but as for Aderfi, since he's fled in secret, it's beyond doubt that he's betrayed us. Those who violate the laws of hospitality and wield their blades against guests are unworthy of the tenant's mercy. I'll capture him, Shimran. This I promise. He will not escape the matriarch's judgment. <clears throat> oh, Chet's getting serious. What, you made it sound like I've never been serious. Haha, <laughs> becoming ever more the model of a tribeswoman, eh, Jet? What are you talking about? Aren't I one? That's not what I mean. I'm just glad to see that you're so concerned about your friends. This is also a tribal matter, you know? True, outsiders are becoming increasingly active in the desert, and as their inheritance er, interference increases, so too do changes of heart and thought. As matriarch babbles right and left hands, we should indeed be concerned about such things. Exactly. Alright, there's one more thing. It's Wenet season at the moment, so the tunnels they dig are starting to show up all around the desert. Such areas are very dangerous, so we'll have to approach our adventure with more care and avoid them at all costs. Wait, just Wenet? Why don't we always hunt them? Or don't we always hunt them? They're no threat. That's still no reason to drop your guard. Sure, sure, I get it. What's a Wenet? <laughs> oh, them. We hunt them every year, and then we collect their body fat and use that to make spices. We don't produce much, but it can be sold at a pretty price. So we don't really lack anything. We just need to control the Wenet hunting grounds, and our long-term prospects will stay good. City folk love these thick, pungent spices. But ask them about us desert folk, and they'll tell you a different story. We also need to hunt other animals. But the smell one it gives off is too strong and will chase them off. As such, our spice workers can't take part in hunts, nor can they serve as assistant assassins. Did they say assassins or assistants? <laughs> oh well. As opposed to the scent of mature Wenet, their larvae give off a much gentler scent, which we often use for scent marks to prevent getting lost in caves or ruins. Huh, you used that in the Gurabad ruins back there. But are they, are they really that dangerous? Not really. For you outsiders, perhaps. Well, you needn't worry about that. We'll protect you. Puff. Eh? What's so funny? It's nothing. Ah, uh, the children of Apep. Reduced to this. Now that you mention it, you haven't said anything in quite a while, Lilupar. And I, for my part, was about to ask if you'd forgotten about someone. Well then, would you like to hear a story? <laughs> sure. As long as you have one to tell, anyway. Tis a shame how long I've slumbered. I fear I'm not current with the hot topics of the day, and am armed only with some ancient yarns. Will you mind, O oh Master of Mine? Don't worry, I'm all ears. Don't worry, I've covered my ears. And Paimon's covered her- Wait a minute. Why are you covering your ears for? The books say that the words of Jin have magic in them, and that their stories have the power to lay curses. And they say also that the behavior such as yours is impolite in the extreme. Do not interrupt me, little lady. Hmm, now where should I begin? As the moonlight paints this... Okay, I guess I'm just not reading this. <laughs> Thousands of years have passed since the events told in this tale, the desert have yet to become so desolate, and the oasis spread out across the land like glittering jewels. In those days, the jinn walked the earth in great numbers, and they lived within the silver night wind and the flowing sands, in the ripples of the unknowable ocean, and in the pattering of the rainforest springs. We Jin were not ordinary creatures, but we were the servants of the Mistress of Flowers. We were untroubled by basic want, nor were we shackled by material thirst. It was life itself that greatly fascinated us. The blooming and wilting of flowers, the gathering and scattering of birds, these were the things that held us in thrall. Apart from that, only our true names could bind us. We were carefree, so long as our mistress walked the earth, and we enjoyed her eternal paradise, her love, and her comfort. But tragedy would come, and our paradise crumbled as the mistress departed. Our revelry turned to mourning, and all that was good and lovely was violently perverted in that anguish. And so we gave al Amar our true names, and became his servants, for he promised to find us our eternal companion, our true master. Deluded hope and trust did we harbor in our hearts, and so forsook our freedom, accepting imprisonment within silver bottles and servitude to his realm. But what was lost was forever lost, never again to return. But do not think that the jinn were wanton servants. Only a love 
bordering upon madness can make the jinn give their true names willingly, for it was their deep love for the Mistress of Flowers that drove them to embrace the desert from the first. Yet waking to the face of tomfoolery in the, of this barren world caused a sh surly jinn to fall incurably in love with the shepherd. Ah, you're awake. Shepherd? Mass Effect? No, not you, no. Huh, but much like you, my master, you were much like him, as he was once. So, bets on this being the sibling? Well now, girl, does that make you jealous? Definitely not. Huh, she's quite transparent, my master. I once did have a daughter. My eyes are not deceived. Say whatever you like. To the djinn, love was a terrible chain driving those who fell into its pit to make sacrifices, like the hyphae of a parasitic insect. Oh boy, Lulu pars at it again with the scary analogies. Heh, <laughs> we jinn do not have this tedious thing you humans call shame, so we do not shy away from discussing love or revealing one's all to a lover. I'm suddenly glad that you're just a bottle now. But the jinn, but to the jinn, this mad love could not be reconciled to betrayal, or else hatred and vengeance three times greater would sure to follow. That was the root of the farce that ended Gurabad, though this is a different tale. Actually, now that you mention it, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you really have no other goal in presenting your true name? Hmm, uh, well, I suppose vigilance is wisdom. Well, I do have something I seek. I wish to go to the Eternal Oasis, just as you do. There are things there that have been left unfinished. What would those be? Forgive me, dear master. I can only slowly tell you that tale as our journey proceeds, but the time for that has not yet come. But know this, it is good fortune that I should have met you. Well, since we've got the same goal, let's get along. How about a toast? And what shall you make this toast with? Me? Huh. <laughs> Alright, weird story time's over. Let's talk about something more relaxing. By the way, Shimmerin, do you play cards? Uh, what kind of cards? We, we talk about <laughs> genius invocation? <laughs> what are we actually going to play? Alright, great. Now show me what you've got. Oh, apparently we're just we're just going to play him in the card game. What if you had never done the card game before? Okay. He's using those? Okay. It is as the stars foretold. It's got a Hydro Fatui and a Mirror Maid. I don't need all these Geo Dice. No, we roll all that. Okay. Turn. Let's play a Timmy. Go ahead and play this on Ayaka. Let's play you. Okay, nice. Also going to put this on Ayaka. Shadows of fate. Bonk. <laughs> put your back into it. Kamisato Ayaka, present. Oh, I did use the... Darn. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Okay, uh, I guess I just can't do anything then. <laughs> That's awkward. You get Hydroed. Okay. Got Sacrificial Sword. Let's see here. Uh, I don't really want that either. 
I'm gonna keep these two animo. Okay, that roll didn't go well. Oh well. We have Paimon. And let's bonk you. Switches to Fatui, and I bonk you. My <laughs> and you get to do nothing. Excellent. Okay, let's switch to Mona. This is destiny. Roll those. Can I get any cryo dice? No. Okay. And I can just kill you with this. Bonk. My work finished. You can't hide. And finish you off. Sakura swirl. Winter shall eventually come. The night flies as they play cards and chat. Okay. So now let's speak to Jet and Azarik. Dune entombed. Whatever the heck that word is, part one. So many weird words. Why not attack? Apex predator hidden beneath the golden sand. Stay especially sharp while moving within a ter within the territory of a one it. And apparently you get an achievement for getting hit by it. Okay, Jet. Jimmerin, Paimon, how did you sleep? Not bad, thanks for asking. Uh, why didn't Lilu Parth use all those strange metaphors about bugs and scorpions? Took Paimon half a night to get them out of her head. Huh, <laughs> glad you guys got some rest. I sure didn't. Huh? Who asked you to get up in the middle of the night to go find Matriarch Babel? Oh, wrong way around. She came to find me. What did Matriarch Babel want from you? Uh, it was an urgent thing. Some matters concerning the elders of the tribe, you know. Oh, I see we have happened upon some open secret. Hmm? Matriarch Babel spoke briefly with me last night. What we must do next is use the tunnels in the dunes to enter the underground portions of the Eternal Oasis. Indeed, my master, Al Amar, once created the most intricate system of canals shaped to provide irrigation for the soil of the mortal kingdoms. Before the dune was encased in sandstorms, before Al Amar was naught but dust, this place rolled with hills most fecund and verdant. Those canals have long run dry. Fortunately, that lends to them that lends them to our purposes quite well, allowing entry to the foundations of the oasis within the dunes. So Matriarch Babel has finally made her decision. It's because Shimran reclaimed the genie, she can serve as our guide. Moreover, my tongue's as clever as that of a mockingbird's, but you should know that by now. I indeed witnessed this occurrence, my master, but I thought there was little need to go into detail about it with you. All right, let's go and discuss the rest of the details with Matriarch Babel then. Do we have to? Can't we just go?
You've arrived, Shimran. I hope that our hospitality hasn't disappointed you. And Jet, while you are here, I shall entrust the great task of apprehending the traitor, Adairfi, to you. I suspect that the recent spike in traitors within the tribe has something to do with the interference of those who hail from the Snowlands. You mean the Fatui? <laughs> the Fatui, their influence spreads even here? They're just like those toads or centipedes Lilu Par keeps talking about. We keep running into them everywhere we go. Initially, they approached our merchants under the banner of trade, then before long they started meddling in our affairs. Knowing as it is, the forces behind them are indeed powerful. Prior to the present, we had already pushed the northern the northerners out of our territory, forbidding them from appearing on our hunting grounds to prevent them from further harming our people. Yet they continue to circle us in the desert like hyenas. I don't know if they seek treasure or alliance from us. Regardless, they are dangerous. I got it. I'll return with additional information or a newly claimed life. And? Information and a newly claimed life. I understand. However, the Fatui are not the most important segment of today's conversation. Shimrin, the task I bade of you today, I believe that Arazik has already gone over the broad strokes with you? Indeed, Matriarch Babel. Good, but I must warn you still that the path ahead is fraught with dangers. Our scouts have discovered signs that many Wenet may be active in the area. Beaties, I will guide them down a safe path. About the Wenet. Wenet are extremely dangerous creatures. Approach them with caution. They may attack you upon being drawn by the genie's presence. Speak not of me as if I am some manner of calamity, desert wench. My master, I will be alert on your behalf. If you come under assault by these Wenet, I will, may well yet be able to rally my strength and defend you. I've got your back too. Well, suddenly we've got two handy sidekicks. <laughs> Esteemed Lilupar, after entering the foundations of the Eternal Oasis, you must rely on your power to guide the group. The ruins of the canals may yet hide your fragments. Indeed, of this I am aware, but I am curious as to how this knowledge came unto you. You learned this from outsiders, did you not? Huh, worry not. Robbing a few bookish researchers, parting a merchant camp with the maps they have brought with them. These are the tricks of an old trade for a desert dweller. I understand. Thank you for granting me this boon of knowledge. It shall yet lead me to old memories and power both, but I will be watching you and that lad of yours. Ilupar, what's wrong with you? Matriarch Babel only organizes expedition to ensure that I can lay my parents to rest. How can you just slander her like this? Jet. My apologies, esteemed Lilupar. I understand your misgivings, and I will endeavor to win your trust. Do as you will. I seek respite. <laughs> Ahem. Very well. Do not let me forestall your departure. Leave as soon as you are able. Okay, let's go. Descend to the innermost depths of the Eternal Oasis. Okay, what is going on here? Sand Grease Poopa. <laughs> what the heck is this thing? Because this glows, so... Oh, the one it breaks it. Okay, there you go. Feel something moving beneath the sand? It's a one it. Eek! <laughs> oh. Getting a cutscene. Are oh, they gonna help me fight? There is no escape! Torn to oblivion! Okay, get out of here, mushrooms. There's more. Freeze to the core. I condemn you. Yeah. I don't know what I'm to call it. <laughs> Specifically. Anyways, they're all dead. Next, you can just keep going into the depths of the canyon. The tunnel leading to the foundations of the eternal oasis should be right there. <clears throat> Beware of sandstorms. In canyons like these, the wind-flung grains sting worse than those flung by the winds on the open sands. 
Be at ease. I shall protect my master. Let us progress. Well, I'm going to split now. You guys stay alert and stay safe. Thanks, you too. Azarik, you're the one who should be staying safe, walking through the desert alone and all. Don't get eaten by a winnet. Abandoned camps? Let's get the abandoned Aramite camp. More speed. It's right here. Yeah, I was here earlier. This is a Tanit camp, and it even has the tribe's markings. Matriarch Babel must have sent someone here ahead of us. Oh, what's this? Someone appears to be less attuned to the traditions they so claim to practice than they'd like. Is there something wrong with the campsite? Huh? Well, what's wrong with the campsite? Paimon's not seeing anything here. She dispatched people to comb this area before our arrival. However, I perceive that they never made it out. Perhaps it is because of such that this place was marked as forbidden. Which means that this area was forbidden for matters of practicality and not terrors wrought from superstition. As for why she sent people here with regularity prior, it could not just be to sate the desire of young Jet here. More camps lie ahead, I would warrant. We'll ask Matriarch Babel about this once we get back. For now, let's keep moving. Yes. We got this thing. We were ordered to find the path to the Eternal Oasis, and it seems that we're finally seeing some results. But this is a perilous place. The investigation team has taken serious losses, and our material transportation lines have been cut by storms. We have run out of food. Perhaps we can capture some nearby Wenet to feed ourselves. Hunting party we sent was lost to the sandstorm. We cannot risk sending any more people out. Ran out of water, bled our sumter beast, scouts are still searching for a way back. We can only leave our fates to the sleeping mistress of the oasis, if she exists at all. Eh, yeah, so they probably all died. Okay, that means, uh, run around over here first. See what's going on over here. Illusion shattered! Crush! Ow. Thank for mercy. Tenant emblem marked records. The good news is, we have found the campsite of the previous investigation party. There was no one there, though. I'd wager they've all become win at food. The bad news is, we're also trapped here. We tried to use a new route to get deeper into the sand dune, but to no avail. We had to fall back before we lost our way for good. The om omnipresent pipes here resemble nothing so much like a net. That makes me shudder just to think about them. Ikan refused to continue onward and started babbling nonsensically about matriarch Babel wanting to become the goddess of flowers' prophetess, thus needing to get rid of us adherents of King Deshret. We disposed of him, which has improved our food situation somewhat. Oh, I'm going to assume they mean uh, that there's just one less mouth to feed. This place is truly bizarre. It is our turn to be sacrifices to King Deshret. Unlucky us. Guess we'll end up becoming one at food very soon. You know what? Equan had a point there. Babel definitely had something nasty in mind for us, sending us to this godforsaken place. Perhaps we should pick up our weapons and fight our way back to Tanit. So they're probably all dead. And may or may not be cannibals. Is this something? What is this? It's definitely something. No idea what though. Guess I'll find out later. What is this? Though I really don't want to act without thinking things through, I have a feeling that if we want to continue we'll need to activate this thing. Hmm, but what if it's dangerous? This is a water pumping mechanism, used to attune to the flow and vectors of water, though now the water's place in its pipes has been usurped by sand. As surely as you witness, this was once a lush garden, in a time when the flowing springs had yet to become a fleeting rarity amongst the sands. Enough talk. I think I may yet be able to spark function back into this mechanism. Allow me to try, my master. <clears throat> sure sounds like this place is familiar to Li Lupar. Let's just let her give it a go. Okay, well there you go. Just dump sand into that thing. 
Oh, that thing over there lit up. You hear that? It feels like something is trembling deeper in the tunnels. Is the door opening? Okay. Let's go in. Is that? That looks weird. Some stuff down there. Ceiling here. Guess I'll touch this. <laughs> oh, that pours out sand into this thing. Hmm. Found something? Look there. Those tunnels. I'm thinking of connecting them and clearing the accumulated sand. I think that might open a path for us. Ah, a reckless thought. Born of ignorance. Still, the plan's worth a try. You're getting on my nerves, genie. It is my acknowledgement that you are receiving, little one. What? Aren't you the little one here? Jet's young and Lilu Pur's small. So the way Paimon sees it, <laughs> they're both little ones. By that logic, seeing that you're both young and small... It makes you the littlest one. I'm pretty sure we have no idea how old Paimon is. What? Don't bring Paimon into your squabbles. <clears throat> Shimmerin, Paimon's not a little... A little... Paimon's not little, right? Huh, how adorable. Okay, uh, so we did that. Shroom over here. More shroomy dudes over here with a chest, okay. And I'll bonk you with wind. Shine down. Shut up. Vengeance I'll will be mine. Throw this out there. I condemn you. There. Explode. Okay, I will take that. But a momentary distraction. What are you doing, Mushroom? Kill you, kill you, and kill you. Get out of here. Okay, touch this. It did a thing. And that's doing a thing. Okay, this is locked. So I need to do a thing here. More speed. Oh. This way. It's a page. Rotate. Okay. Well, that spawned a chest. Like, do I need to interact with this at all? No? Oh, this is Sealy. Okay, start. I will take these. So, keep going. Oh, is there anything over here? Hello, mushrooms. This one's above me. Okay, well, forget them. Illusion shattered. Inazuma shines eternal. Give you a nice a slash. Okay, touch this. It does that. That robot want to come to life? Yes, he does. Beg for mercy.
Do I need to go up there to kill those mushrooms? I don't see anything over there. Well, we're going up this way anyway. More speed. Oculus. The room with the broken floor. The path ahead lies beneath the sands. What? Oh, it's been buried? It'll take years for just a few of us to dig it out. Fret not, let us hunt about for mechanisms nearby that might help drain the sand. Sure, let's go. Find another way to enter the central area. What the heck? Give me this. Okay. Hello, mushrooms. Exploration knowledge. Pipe divider valve. Interacting with the pipes during valves will change the way in which the pipes are connected, thus adjusting the flow of the objects within them. Okay. Uh, touch this. Okay. I'm not sure how exactly that changed anything, but sure. It works now. Opens the door. What is this? Page. So what's in here? Am I supposed to be going this way? <clears throat> Nothing in there. Hello. There is no escape. Beg for mercy. Freeze to the core. Rack and ruin. Illusion shattered. I can open this. So this is right back to the previous room. Okay, okay. <laughs> shoot the wall. It is supposed to shoot that way. Okay, um... I guess we hit this again? Is this what I'm doing? So move the thing back that way. Is that what I needed? Oh, now I can use this. Which does a thing. And now I can go in here. Activate. Shutter. Hello, mushrooms. How? Die, please. And just stand in this. Uh, take a nice sand bath. Shower. I'm sure that's great. Okay, so what's going on in here? We got we got things to, to activate, I guess. There's a thingy here. This needs to shoot at it. Like so. So I guess we, we switch this over. And now it shoots. And door opens. Okay. Should I switch it back though? Oh yeah, that one needs to be active for this. Okay, let's kill this robot real quick. Yeah. 
<laughs> Stop this. Did I even kill it? Run to the sand go down. Ow. Shut Die. Up. Okay. That door's Wait. open. I'll take this chest. Oop. I can put these to good use. Okay. Now we can go down further. Where the heck is this Oculus? I don't know. Where is this freaking... Oh, it, it is above me. How did I not see that before? Oh my gosh. Oh, because it was, it was up here. I didn't look up in this room. Give me that. Oh, there's also a music thing here. Take that. Let's go down now. So, nothing there. <laughs> Scorpion, die. Waypoint. Oh, hello. Ow. Why are you gonna laser beam me like that? Okay, let's go. Oh, here's the thing. Suppose that means I'll run into a, a pillar soon. There's gotta be one around here somewhere. It's all these electro shrooms. Ow. Beg for mercy. More of you. Did you die already? Stop doing that. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Remarkable chest. Another one of these. I can put Grab that. Hello. Can open this door. Oh, it's a big room here. Oh, there's the pillar. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to touch the pillar. Mark seals. Okay, they have been marked. Get out of there. Yeah. Alright, so what happens now? We grab this. What kind of upgrades do we get?
So the light merges with Lee Lupar's magic battle, you feel a little bit of your own power being pulled away. That sounds weird. Through the genie's entranced eyes, you see a ragged shepherd boy along with a dancing maiden, her presence resplendent like a limpid gem beneath the moon's gaze. Festering hatred assails your senses before alchemizing into primal burning love in a certain sudden instant. Such love cannot be contained by the vessel of a mortal. It is an emotion that can swallow one whole. Then, mortal, what desire of yours can I make manifest? Are you all right? Answer me. Don't scare Paimon like that. Are you okay? Worry not. My master remains unscathed. Sorry, I was out of it for a moment. Really? I thought you were seized by something foul within the bottle. Yeah, you worried Paimon sick. Apologies, I did not mean to let you behold a moment so shameful, but as you might understand, I have reclaimed a portion of my memories. Now I may guard you better. Huh, the light inside the bottle really does look more sprightly now, does it? <laughs> yeah, it just looks like the lights I saw when Matriarch Babel was emerging from Azarik's tent. Wait, what? <laughs> What is happening? Let's change subjects. Across the sands, there is still much of me that lies scattered. If you find it within yourself to offer me this generosity, my master, I will be beyond grateful should you collect my fragments and return me to wholeness. In areas around a genie's fragments, a spot of green should flourish. That is because we jinn always release energy around us to create an environment conductive to our slumber. Hope you shall bear this in mind. Okay, you have my thanks. Paimon will help too. Paimon's eyesight is second to none. Don't worry about it. Ah, I am invigorated. Come, let us delve deeper. Yeah, let's go. Okay, Genie in the Magic Battle number two. Uh, Lilu Paris regained a portion of her energy. You can use limited amounts of Genie's might to clear certain obstacles that block her master's way. Okay. Uh, by using Genie's might, Lilu Par can remove small and large atmospheric vortexes. However, Lilupar will lose Genie's might when she encounters Wenet attacks. Various ancient ruins within the desert of Hadramaveth Hadram Hadram have Jinn shrines in them. Draw near to the drench branches within them to restore Genie's might for Lilupar. Okay. Ruins here are more intact. Is this an ancient temple? No, alas, it is merely a water supply station. Water kings of the waste drew water they needed from within the mountains. They hollowed it and wore an interconnected network of tubes. This place used to be a greenhouse and reservoir where they could cultivate their crops and plants. But look at it now. Oh, incredible. Beautiful child, how can one. In blah, 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 blah. Well, not reading that. Oh, hello. Shudder. Shine down. Vengeance will be mine. Eye for an eye. Ow. Yes, I got. Oh, I died. That's awkward. Here, have a one of these. Illusion shattered. Ow. Wind, hear me. Beg for mercy. Rack and ruin. Ow. Did you die already? Doesn't even drop anything. How rude. Ooh, chest. can put these to good use. And give me another chess piece. Okay, so I can grab this. This goes over here. Okay, that gives me a thingy to reveal torches. Right there. There we go. Here's another chest I take. Chest is like unwrapping a gift. Moving on this way. I'll grab that. Let's 
place. Once a pumped with water, now only piles of something or other. Activate the mysterious mechanism. This does the same thing as all these other tablets. I wonder if maybe you get the ability to read these later. Hold on, I must loot first. Okay, now activate. Just pour on sand. Oh. Yep, I'll grab that. So now I have all the seals for this area. To go back to that pillar at some point. Do a set of rocks there. There's two rocks there. Hello. Shine down. Torn to oblivion. Do that. Kill you. Only two rocks here. Okay, uh, what is this? Let's touch it. Hold back the attractive monsters. Okay. Oh great, they're attacking the thing. So what does this do? It opens a door and has a magical path of dust. <laughs> Guiding us through the large door. Okay, so what's going on up here? Whoa, what a cavern. Is this place full of water too? What is this place? A mechanism once built to sustain a dream of eternity, to supply the oasis, forever and always. It was once propelled by water, but is now driven only by sand. King Deshret left his glass goblet here, at the center of this place. The tales speak of him bidding farewell to joy and leaving this cup behind here as a receptacle to contain past traumas and memories. And those traumas and memories protected the eternal sleep of my mistress, the Lord of Flowers. Was that something that happened in your time? Hmm, I suppose, but the details elude my recollection, what with my memories being as scattered as they are. Then we need to go down there and activate that... glass? Patience, see how there's still two points of entry? Perhaps there are more mechanisms we need to disable. Pretty have faith in, have faith in my intuition, dear master. Oh, huh, so how are we going to get through now? Looks like all we can do is head back to the surface and find another path. Uh, Genie, can you find another way leading to the other two tunnel entrances? I dare not claim to be certain with loose confidence. I believe so. Alright, good. Then we best go back to the surface and start plotting a new path. Any objections? What do you think, my master? Uh, I need to look around some more. Your words, my will. I still need to... Go back to the thingamajig. Also, what happens if I just jump down in here? It'll probably just teleport me back. Uh, I need to go backwards to the pillar. The store. Take Eat that. I have no need. What about this puzzle. So much for that puzzle. Huh, the air outside is crisp. What difference is there? It's still as dry and hot as before. You aren't a desert dweller, of course you don't get it. Hey, little wildcat. Over here, if this isn't a coincidence. Azarik, what are you doing here? Exploring and scouting, same as always. 
What, is running into another explorer in the desert strange to you? It's a little suspect, actually. Running into sand and scorpions is normal. Running into the same person all the time is one co coincidence too many for Paimon. Ha, huh, alright. Come over and have some food, drink some water. You all must be tired. Yeah, the last thing you do with someone that uh, you're sus of is eat their food. You don't take any food or beverages from them. Hmm, you got any plans after this? You want to come with us? Come with you? You found a path? <laughs> don't tell. Of course! Ah, never mind that for now. The sky is dimming. We should rest. The path will still be there tomorrow. Huh, you're right about that. Speaking of which, Lilupar, I'm curious but never got to ask. Why do you hate Matriarch Babel so much? Yeah, other than Shimmerin, you've been mean to everyone, especially Matriarch Babel. Every word you say is all is always so harsh. What of it? Does it displease you that I taunt your tr tribe mother so? Of course it does, but I want to know why. Hmm, why, you ask? Uh, let me tell you a story. Oh, great, story time. The cold of the desert nights bears a heft of its chill, and murmurs of secrets whisper of over the midnight dunes basked beneath the silvery fang of a crescent moon, the low voice the genie breathes life into a tale from an age-long past. Okay, that was all pointless text. Once, a genie and a mortal king found themselves entwined in love, and from their union came children. But as time flowed, the mortal could not break the chains of power and ambition that clung to him, betraying the love of the genie. Hence, on the path of revenge, she twisted the fates of her children, wreathing them in a plot to unmake their father and kingdom. And time sailed ever onward. The children of the genie grew to become king and queen, yet fell to the same schemes to the same curse, until their kingdom was finally shattered upon reaching Calamity's end. Such an ending, then, was that which the genie had orchestrated from the very beginning. So, that was a scary story, horrifying even. But what does this have to do with my question? The genie in the story is not so unlike Babel, is she? Whether they differ, however, is the shame and quests for renown that so compel your kind. Babel wears them like a mask. Though she too is a creature of deceit, I taste it wafting from her very being. To her, be it son or daughter, all children are but instruments for her schemes. If you were absent, my master, I feel I fear I might even be quite fond of her. But today, things are different. She threatens your safety, and so, affability is beyond my sphere of virtues. No, Matriarch Babel isn't that kind of person. You have spent more time with her, and must have taken orders from her. Orders that the left hand must never learn of. Perhaps those sordid affairs were just too inconvenient for you to face or consider. But I know your follies, and stupidity does not rank amongst them. Consider these matters yourself. It's fine, Jet. Don't take this stuff so seriously. It's not like she's that much nicer to me or anything. And should I? To you, who are little more than a slave? My words have run dry. Apologies, then, I have, if I have upset you. Um, maybe we just haven't been together that long. Lulu Power was pretty mean to Jet before, but she seems much nicer now. So, uh, maybe if everyone knew more about each other, we could have a few less misunderstandings and stuff like that. Yeah, let's talk about something else instead. Sure. What, are we going to play cards again? What's the matter, Jet? You're looking real distracted right now. Nothing. Just continue. Speaking of which, what have you all discovered? Tell me. I'm curious. Well, I don't really know how to describe it to you. There are countless ancient pipes leading into the temple inside the mountain, and the legendary goblet of al Amar is there, too. So, that thing was more than just a legend, huh? It really exists? What are you talking about? Is that goblet valuable or something? Huh, that's not the actual goblet. It's just a mechanism holding the eternal oasis in stasis. Ah, uh, so it's worth nothing at all? Now Paimon's depressed. Yeah, so that's what we've seen so far. Then, the eternal oasis was never far from us at all. Yeah, Dad always told me that there would one day that he would one day enter the eternal oasis and find mom again. Never thought I'd be helping him make his dream come true. Jabrail would be proud. Him? Ha! Huh. I don't care about him. Dad was a real simpleton. This trip was for me to send him to the place where he belongs. Doesn't matter what he feels about this. 
Uh, I don't know. Truth be told, I just don't know. My parents, will they truly reunite in such a place? A place we're heading to? Is it just a meaningless destination that I want to reach for the sake of... Because I don't want to console myself? No way. Jabrail would be super happy. You're helping him fulfill his wish, after all. Whatever the case, I have you to thank, Shimmerin and Paimon. Thanks for coming all this way to accompany me on this adventure. And, you know, putting up with my willfulness. After Dad left, the fear of losing my home only leaves me when I'm with you. <laughs> Being able to adventure with you again has been great for us, too. And what about me, eh? Cold and alone and, and I skipped too early? Haha, <laughs> stop it. You're my family, too. You really sh showed me how things were done when I first came to the tribe. Hmm, this little wildcat was terrifying when she first arrived. Let me tell you, her face was like a doll. She wouldn't cry. She wouldn't talk. But after spending some time messing around with, about with me, she slowly opened up. Well, so Jet has moments of silence, too? Paimon never thought that was possible. Stop your heckling, Paimon. Don't listen to him. You too, Shimmerin. Haha, <laughs> indeed. She didn't complain when she fell, and she didn't cry when she was hurt. Her calmness was, frankly, terrifying, but her rage, when it comes, crash, she's like thunder. What are you saying? Do you want a beating? Anyway, though Chet is young, she is far more mature than most her age. It's frankly a relief. Alright, alright. You're full of it. I practically died of embarrassment when I first joined the Tanit time after dad was gone was like a haze. Anyway, I thought I would never be able to feel normally again. It was all thanks to Azari guiding me, teaching me how things worked in the tribe, like a big brother that I could recover. It's been slow going. That's how it was. No need to be modest. Yeah, dad also said he was going to tell me more stories about mom, but now I'm never going to get a chance to learn who she was. He said she was a beauty, that she was a character with countless virtues, like, oh stars high above the wasteland. O stars high above the wasteland, O nightingales weary from the day, it's time to take off the crown of roses, cleanse yourself with wine made from grapes. That's the only memory I have left of her. Dad always used to sing me this old nursery rhyme. That was lovely. Stop it. <clears throat> you know I'm always out of tune. <laughs> this is the song Jabrail liked to sing. Huh, I knew you'd remember. I spent a long time practicing this one. Couldn't get it down when Dad was still with us. After Dad left, I, uh, <laughs> finding my pitch just got that much harder. But I still learned pretty good, didn't I? Yeah, that sounded good. Jet's voice might be a little raspy, but it fits a soft melody like this. Yeah. Alright, you should get some rest. We have last to do tomorrow. I'll stand watch tonight. Sleep, close your eyes, the eternal oasis welcomes the lonely wanderer. Lay upon the pure and flowing streams, from here memories are forever sweet and pure. Sure, whatever that means. <laughs> hey, the sun's up. Got something to show you, follow me. What's the hurry? What's with the secrecy? Can't you just show us here? Okay, go to the place that Azarik mentioned. <clears throat> 